Hey guys, it's Tom Box. Welcome to MSC TV. In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys my breakdown on YC's Chicago from the top 16 decks to our champion playing Luna Lights, Raphael Nevin. And we have the most common engines played in the current format. And we're going to talk about why did Altergeist fall short? They were expected to do well, but they did not. And we'll dive deep into that as well. As well as how did this YCS kind of shape the upcoming meta in the coming few months? Based on existing data, articles, and videos, huge shoutouts to Asian Persuasion for capturing all those deck profiles and interviews, I can say that it is a really great time for being an off-meta player or non-meta player because I think everyone has a chance to top now. I just want to give shoutouts to my Patreons, of course, for supporting me thus far. Love you guys. And remember, it is February, so new month, new month of proxies. So remember to put in your submissions for the proxies that you want for February. And then it will be released to the public a couple weeks later. So, you know, I got to catch that. And let's get into this video. Now, looking at the top 16 representation, we've got six spots taken from Thunder Dragon. We have Sky Strikers taking two spots, and the rest of them are kind of one ofs. Like the other eight positions, we have Luna Lights, Prank Kids, Orcas, Crusadia, Cyber Dragon, just pure danger, Sub Terror Control, which is probably Guru Control, and we have ABCs. Now among the top decks, many of them shoved in a side engine, whether it be the Danger Engine, which is such a natural choice to counter out Thunder Dragons. Thunder Dragons leave out with the Colossus, and then you can't search. Luckily, you can still draw, because your ability to draw is not hindered, you can put out more and more bodies on the board too. Not only play around the, the Thunder Dragon Colossus, you can break the board and put them in a bad situation. And if you go first, you can use these extra bodies to fetch out cards using Saryuja, maybe use Curious. It's just overall an amazing engine. Even Thunder Dragons themselves, which want to deal with the Colossus, they can also basically use the same engine and kind of make their plays even stronger, making that really annoying turn one board. Now, the other engine people played would be Sky Strikers. I know in the feature match of Simo, of course, uh, he played Trickstar Sky Striker, and uh, we can see how well the Sky Striker engine plays out. And then the Kalvatahan, which had played the ABC in the top 16, I believe he was third place. He also got uh, the Sky Striker engine built into his deck because it is still a very powerful engine. If your deck does not kind of trip over it, it is still a very beneficial engine to put in your deck. Now with that much variety on the top cut, it kind of gives me a little bit of insight where any deck with a small OTK combo or the ability to maintain control and can play around the existing meta plays, they have a chance to actually make it to the top. Like Cyber Dragons, Prank Kids, and Orcas, they're all capable of doing their own things very well, and they have their own intricate combos that are definitely devastating when they are successfully executed. Cyber Dragons, they just OTK you really fast. If they get their fusion going off, they get their really massive damage push, you're dead. You look at Prank Kids, they can establish massive boards, and they can control the board and fuse into something and wreck your board on your own turn, or just OTK you on their turn. So they're also very much capable of killing you. And then we have Orcus, which is kind of newer to the top of the line, which is more interesting because they are a dark centric deck. And with the PK engine, they also now have Time Thieves. They can go into the Azathoth play on your turn, so your opponent cannot play with any monster effect, which really, really just suck when that happens. Or they have the ability to just control the board using whatever combo that they have. Of course, with the Danger engine splash in, they just have multiple dark lineups to actually just push forward through the board without searching. The deck is naturally really good against Thunder Dragon because they don't really require any form of searching. Their deck is mainly focused on dumping stuff into the graveyard. And because they're able to play around the existing meta, this is why we're seeing so many decks emerge to the top. So moving forward, I believe that a lot more of these top tier deck players are going to give these rogue tier deck players a lot more respect because these decks are very much capable of taking victory away from you just as well as the other parts of the meta. Next, we're going to talk about our YCS champion, Raphael Nevin, and his Dangered Luna Lights. If you want to watch the full interview with Raphael Nevin on Asian Persuasion's channel, go check it out. I'll put a link down in the description below. To summarize the interview, there were three key things that helped him win this event. One, he had a really awesome teammate that came up with the deck. Two, there was a surprise factor. And three, a lot of Luna-like cards are not hard once per turn. According to his own interview, a lot of the pros did not know what to do against his deck. They would just burn hand traps on random cards. And because most of the cards are not like hard once per turn, he would just reloop the same combo and basically nothing really happened with those hand traps. They became a misplay and it caused a lot of pro players to misplay due to the fact that they lacked the knowledge of the deck. And basically they got punished for it and the surprise factor was a pretty big element that contributed to his victory. 
Now this is like a textbook example if you have the surprise factor on your side and you're a really competent player with your own deck, you're able to take victories even from some of the best decks out there. Now, but will this deck actually be just as good the next time around? I would say not as likely. In fact, because of it winning the recent YCS, it's gained a lot more attention. And with a lot more attention, people will give it the respect it deserves and prepare for it in the next coming events. And because of that, even some people have already leaked how to beat that deck. You know, the meta will shift, the meta will always adapt. Now we move on to the common engines you should expect at your locals. To start it out, we have the Sky Striker engine, which can be splashed if you want access to negation of monster effects and stealing monsters. And that's mainly if your deck is capable of handling playing all of that without using your main monster zone. Then we have the Danger Engine, which can eat up 25% of your deck space, which is really good because it gives you a solid consistency, but it comes with at a hefty price tag of three Nessies and three Suchinokos, each of which are like 40 to 50 bucks. Yeah, it's a pricey engine to play, and you can expect that your most competitive players will shove that engine into their deck. Then we have, of course, the Summon Sork Saryuja plays. I guess this is kind of a follow-up to the Danger Engine, but it is a lot more common now to see people go into Saryuja to dig the four cards because it bypasses, of course, Thunder Dragon Colossus. And the other engine that we're seeing to be a lot more popular, but this is mainly among the Thunder Dragon players, which is the Chaos Melody Engine, which is the melody of Awakening Dragons with the Levian Nier to get the extra pops on the field or use it to rip a card out of your opponent's hand and occasionally revive something from the graveyard. And the last package that I think is very popular is the Time Thief PK package, which get, lets you get access to Azathoth on your opponent's turn, where you can use the rank up magic on your Time Thief to put it into an Azathoth, and that's counted as an XC summon, so therefore your opponent is locked out of all monster effects. And remember, Azathoth isn't exactly a card that actually activates, so there's nothing to really negate. The moment it happens, it's, it's done. It's a condition, basically. So those are the most common engines we're seeing moving forward. The Azathoth engine is something I would be a bit more weary of because it's the precursor to the Orcus thing, which puts in into a VFD. So turn one VFD, yeah, again, it's like an Azathoth, but you're locking your opponent out from a lot more, like the hand traps and everything. It's just pretty damn devastating. And with a 3k body, I think that's much harder to get rid of, in my opinion. Now, Altergeist was expected to do very well at this event, but there's three reasons that came to mind why they actually did not do very well and failed to take the top 32 cut. Number one would be meta adaptation. Because they did so well in the previous event where they were basically side by side with Thunder Dragon, a lot of people expected that they would be the better deck as they are the natural counter to the Thunder Dragon deck. And because of that, a lot of people adapted to that meta and they have to shift the meta forward. So people prepared against that deck a lot harder than normal. I've seen some main deck Pranker Tops to deal with the Spell Village, or they just played the Danger Engine entirely because they bypass a lot of the Spell Village issues. So people prepared for the deck and therefore, it's a lot more difficult for them to move forward as they were basically the deck with a target on their back. Number two would be the deck struggles to maintain control once it loses it. I'm not saying the deck is super consistent. There is a little consistency issue when you don't open with the multi-faker and then you have to pass turn without any disruption. Yeah, you're likely going to die very fast. However, the problem is the way that people have adapted kind of counters the way that Altergeist plays. Altergeist monsters, naturally, they're not very strong. From Marionetter all the way down to Multifaker, they don't actually have high attack stats. And the highest defense stats comes from the Conquiry with uh, 2400 defense. And that's like one of your hand traps, which is pretty nice. But the problem comes from people just spamming the board with danger. If you put out the Secret Village of the Spellcaster, what your opponent does is they just spam a bunch of danger cards and you don't even want to bounce their card anymore with the multi-faker with the Silkidus. So you're kind of limited down to the protocols in the back row. So you need yourself a floodgate. And if you don't open that floodgate, which is a hard like open or hard search, you're going to struggle in the upcoming matches. And for people that kind of are ready for the matchup, they put in like twin twisters, they put in like the panker tops in the main, and they just pop out the board and pop out the problem. And then with a board like that, you're likely just going to get OTK'd right away. Or if not, you can't even get control back because all the cards are already on the table. And number three, there are just so many blower cards <laughs> that are just one card. Like Alter Guys, you need to commit to the board so you set a lot of stuff, evenly match, wipes your board clean, and it is very hard to play after that. Denko Saka shuts you out so that you can't 
even activate your face down cards and that kind of turns off multi faker in your hand too epidemic eradicator now that's at three even if it's not a three you can actually still play it but epidemic eradicator is a bit more popular now so that you can just wipe the board clean against your opponent red reboot is now heavily sided in most people's side decks so you're gonna get your trap shut down and you don't exactly play a counter trap that stops it so you need your own red reboot to stop that red reboot and you, you guys can do the math and i guess this is not exactly a complete blow up but there's panker tops main deck now in the sky striker decks in a lot of variants of decks it kind of makes it very hard for alter guys to stay as king of the hill and so for format expectations my prediction on the upcoming format is that people are going to adapt to a lot more danger plays because they are so rampant out there and they deal with the Altergeist and Thunder Dragon as it just completely bypasses them. And with such a diverse like top cut, the extra deck space is going to feel even tighter because there's going to be a lot more surfacing of the rogue decks and you need your side deck to be as diverse as possible. One card should be able to handle multiple matchups so that you're not just specifically targeting one matchup. It's not gonna work out like that anymore. And if your side deck is not prepared, the games two and three, they're going to be hell for you guys. Now I can say that it is a great time to play a rogue tier deck in Yu-Gi-Oh right now, especially in the competitive scene, where if someone's not prepared against your deck, they will still lose to you, even if they have the so-called better deck. It's just how it is right now and with so much options available, I think now is the best time to jump into the competitive scene and just see if you'll even make it to the top. And for my final remarks, there's going to be the addition of Salamangrades coming out in the next two weeks or so. So that's something for us to look forward to. And because it is such a cheap access deck and it gives people access to Ash and everything else, even though Ash seems to have lost a little bit of popularity, well, it just means that we're going to get another deck added to the roster of top tier decks. Well, that's all I got for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed my analysis, leave a thumbs up. If you guys got comments or some things that you want to add to this analysis, leave it down in the comment section below. Enlighten me. I would love to hear your thoughts on what happened at YCS Chicago. This is just my analysis based off of reading the articles and seeing the feature matches and reading a lot of these feature matches. And... Uh, well, if you guys want to see more stuff from MSD.TV, hit that subscribe button, smash the notification bell, and uh, don't forget to hold on to your MSD.TV, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job, and you can also subscribe to MSD.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV, and I'll see you next time.